Thanks, Gary. You're listening to Search the Scriptures Daily, a program in which we encourage everyone who desires to know God's truth to look to God's Word for all that is essential for salvation and living one's life in a way that is pleasing to Him. In this first segment of our program, we are continuing a series on yoga and the incredible popularity that it has among those who call themselves Christians. For those who would like more details about the subject beyond what we're presenting here, uh, you can order Dave Hunt's book, Yoga and the Body of Christ, and Gary will give you that information later. Dave, last week, as you know, we established that the religion of Hinduism is foundational to the practice of yoga, and the goal of Hinduism is self-realization, that is, to realize that you're God. And everything about yoga is designed for God realization. So when a Christian practices yoga, he or she is, to some degree, involved in the religion of Hinduism. In our last program, we discussed some of the major doctrines of Hinduism, such as the worship of 330 million plus gods, the belief that God is everything, which is pantheism, or God is in everything, panentheism. You're God and I'm God. Right. Uh, That'd be really bad, wouldn't it? (laughs) Uh, also, Dave, we mentioned uh, transmigration. We didn't use that term, but that's the technical mm-hmm. term mm-hmm. for reincarnation. and uh, Transmigration of souls. Right. And karma and dharma. Uh, we mm-hmm. mentioned all these things last week, so if you're interested in that, you can get last week's program. Although such beliefs and practices are certainly a part of the belief system of yoga, One practice is nearly always involved in yoga, and that is meditation, Dave. That's what I'd like you to talk about uh, as we uh, start this uh, segment. What is wrong with a Christian practicing yoga meditation? Well, we have to define the term. Uh, Westerners generally think of meditation as contemplation thinking deeply about something. Mm -hmm. So if you try to tell someone who's uh, into yoga, some yoga center, YMCA, YWCA could be. Well, uh, well, we don't. Baptist Church. Yeah, yes. Which we'll get into a little bit later. Well, we don't. uh, They don't have me meditating on anything. But Eastern meditation is the opposite of what the West has always understood and what the Bible means by meditation. Mm -hmm. For example, Psalm 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Oh, meditation. Oh, you're thinking. You're meditating on the Bible. Meditation in the East is the opposite. It's non-thinking. It's quieting yourself, stilling the mind, uh, getting all thoughts out. Mm -hmm. Uh, They would call it relaxation. And they would say, well, but yoga helps me to relax. Um, So what does that do? Well, I think in the book we quote probably some of the great yogis of the past. This all came out of Hinduism. And they would tell you that when you, uh, are, you put yourself in this meditative but non-thinking, alert and awake but relaxed, they would say, a state of consciousness, you are open to a takeover by, well, they would call it by the gods. And uh, you would be, now not every yoga class, of course, would give you a mantra, but Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, Transcendental Meditation, TM, and the mantras are all the names of Hindu deities, and you are calling them by the repetition of this mantra. You are calling that entity to come and possess you. Mm -hmm. So if you read the books by the yoga masters, uh, which, of course, Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, that's his title, Yogi, claimed to be, 
or Paramahansa Yogananda. Uh, you know, uh, I grew up in Southern California, and we would drive by, on the way to San Diego, we'd drive by the temple there, Yogananda's temple. Mm -hmm. The Self-Realization Fellowship is what it was called. And that word was right out there, a plane. He came to teach you that you can realize that you are God. The Kriya Yoga, they call it, but it's also Hatha Yoga. Mm -hmm. And he initiated more than 100,000 people into this. Um, so uh, it's the, the definition of the words is much different. And uh, you are getting yourself opening yourself, even if you're practicing the YMCA and you're trying to reach this meditative, quiet, relaxed state, you could be opening yourself to demonic entities. And the, and the yoga masters warned about this and said, you got to have your guru present with you uh, in case something starts to happen. <laughs> Tom, you know, you, we did a DVD They've uh, – that was way before DVDs oh, or I'm, even video. Well, it's become that a DVD. That was a film. Right. right. We did a film. Right. But it's become a DVD now, I, pre yes. I presume, called Cult Explosion. I wrote the book many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. That was one of the first projects I worked on as a, as a filmmaker. Yeah. Um, and uh, we interviewed a lot of uh, practitioners of yoga. Uh, some of them were TM practitioners. Mm -hmm. Some of them sued Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. And I can tell you, um, well, we, there were numbers of them who went insane or committed suicide. And Maharishi would say, well, you're just working out the bad karma, you know. And, and they would have to lock some of these people in rooms uh, in, in the hotel where they were going through this. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, so it may seem very innocent, uh, but uh, it can be very dangerous. Right. Uh, but, but getting back to one thing that we keep saying, Tom, if you're interested in physical fitness, why don't you practice exercises that were designed for physical fitness? Now, if you want to yoke yourself with Brahman, the, the universe, you want to become God and realize that you've got these uh, amazing powers... Uh, then practice yoga. But if that doesn't fit your hopes, then I think you ought to get away from it. Well, Dave, we're going to get into the uh, more and more details as we continue in this series. But meditation, you know, there are, there are those that say, look, I'm just interested in the physical side. I'm not interested in the spirituality mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. But all, invariably... In almost every case that I can think of, and, and we're going to cover some examples uh, later, or maybe perhaps this program and the programs to come, but meditation is always a part of this. Uh, last week we talked about things. Well, they, they would call it relaxation. Yes, you know. right. but it is meditation, no well, matter you're how you're blanking how your you, mind out. How you describe it, that's, that's what's happening. Easter meditation. Exactly, exactly. Dave, uh, last week, the end of the program, we talked about how this popularity developed uh, with regard to yoga. And uh, there is a missionary organization, not a Christian missionary organization, mm -hmm. but it's the largest missionary organization in the world. Right. It's called the Hindu Vishwa Parashat. Right. Mm -hmm. This organization, I think, can take credit for bringing yoga to the West and uh, not only yoga, but certainly Hinduism, which is what it's all about. Mm -hmm. But this has been uh, the organization that has created, I think, is responsible for creating the popularity of yoga that we're seeing today. For more information about the Berean Call, call us toll-free at our order number or visit our website, 